China just unveiled the YJ-20 missile during rehearsals for its upcoming Victory Day parade, and experts say it could be unlike anything we've seen before. With a hybrid design blending ballistic speed and aerodynamic maneuvering, this system may redefine how far technology can push the limits of defense and strategy. In today's video, we'll explore what makes the YJ-20 so unique and why it matters now. When China held its second comprehensive rehearsal for the upcoming 2025 Victory Day Parade, the global defense community quickly turned its eyes toward the streets of Beijing. Among the tanks, drones, and armored vehicles rolling through Tiananmen Square, a group of missiles mounted on parade launchers stole the spotlight. These were not familiar models, but newly labeled systems, YJ-15, YJ-17, YJ-19, and the much-discussed YJ-20. For analysts, this was a rare moment, the first time these missiles had been seen in public. Photographs quickly spread across social media and defense networks. Observers such as Rick Zhou, a well-known follower of Chinese military developments, pointed out the unusual shape of the YJ-20. Unlike conventional cruise or ballistic missiles, this system appeared to have a biconical design, hinting at a blend of aerodynamic and ballistic characteristics. That single feature sparked speculation that the YJ-20 might represent a new category of missile, one capable of both speed and controlled maneuvering. The other systems were equally notable. The YJ-17 and YJ-19 drew attention for what some experts believe to be hypersonic performance, while the YJ-15 appeared to be a high-speed supersonic missile. Together, the lineup showcased a broad spectrum of strike technologies, supersonic, hypersonic, and hybrid, indicating that China has been diversifying its development programs. What made this moment even more significant is that it wasn't an accident. These rehearsals are carefully staged, and the decision to include these missiles was likely a calculated choice. By allowing the world to see them, Beijing signaled confidence that these systems are nearing operational maturity. Just as the Euclid telescope provides astronomers with a fresh window into distant galaxies, these parade rehearsals offered outside observers a rare glimpse into the trajectory of China's technological progress. This first public confirmation moved the YJ-20 from rumor to reality. And while parade footage is limited, it gave analysts enough detail to start piecing together what sets this missile apart. That sets the stage for the deeper question. What exactly is the YJ-20 designed to do, and how is it different from earlier systems? The YJ-20 captured attention not because of its size or platform, but because of its unique design features. At its core, the YJ-20 seems to combine elements of two different missile categories, the rapid acceleration of a ballistic missile and the controlled maneuvering of an aerodynamic glide vehicle. This dual nature is what analysts mean when they describe it as a hybrid. Instead of following a predictable high-arc trajectory like traditional ballistic missiles, the YJ-20 may be able to adjust its course mid-flight, complicating interception attempts. This design is particularly intriguing because of its resemblance to hypersonic glide vehicles already under study worldwide. A missile that can blend ballistic speed with aerodynamic lift is far more unpredictable than one locked into a straight-line path. According to speculation shared in open-source forums, this system may travel at supersonic or even hypersonic speeds, then maneuver to evade tracking systems. If true, it would represent a major leap beyond earlier Chinese anti-ship ballistic missiles, such as the DF-21D, which earned the nickname Carrier Killer but relied on a more conventional flight profile. There are also suggestions that the YJ-20 could be compatible with vertical launch systems, making it deployable from advanced naval vessels like the Type 055 destroyers. If that's accurate, the missile would not be limited to land-based batteries, but could be integrated into China's Blue Water fleet. Flexibility in deployment is key. Missiles that can be launched from multiple platforms offer commanders more options and present challenges for adversaries trying to anticipate where threats might originate. Equally important is the dual-use role many analysts suspect. Unlike missiles designed for a single target type, the YJ-20 might be capable of striking both naval vessels and land-based infrastructure. 
that would expand its role significantly, positioning it not just as a defensive tool, but as part of a broader strategy to complicate the movement and positioning of foreign forces. In short, what makes the YJ-20 unique is not only its potential speed, but also its unpredictability, maneuverability, and flexibility. It represents the next step in missile evolution, systems designed not to simply fly fast, but to think differently about how to reach their target. So what does the arrival of the YJ-20 actually mean? Beyond the technical discussion, its introduction has immediate strategic implications. Analysts suggest that this missile, once operational, could form a critical piece of China's broader anti-access slash area denial strategy. That term refers to creating a zone where opposing forces, particularly naval groups, find it increasingly difficult to operate freely. For the United States, which relies heavily on aircraft carriers to project presence across the Pacific, this could represent a new layer of complexity. The reasoning is straightforward. Aircraft carriers thrive when they can operate within striking distance of contested areas. If a system like the YJ-20 can force them to reposition farther away, the reach and speed of carrier-based operations decline. In effect, the missile could reshape the geometry of naval planning, extending the buffer zones that foreign navies must respect. It's not just the carriers that are affected. Forward bases across the Pacific could also come under new pressure. If the YJ-20 is indeed capable of land attack roles, then logistics hubs, runways, and supply depots may face heightened vulnerability. This doesn't mean these bases are defenseless. U.S. systems like the Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense and THAAD are designed to intercept a wide variety of threats. But it does mean planners will need to account for missiles that fly differently, unpredictably, and possibly in larger numbers. Naval analyst Alex Luck explained to Newsweek that while U.S. forces have shown strong interception capabilities in regions like the Red Sea, the key challenge lies in stockpiles and sophistication. In his view, China's systems may be designed to be more advanced and possibly produced at greater scale, which could strain existing defensive layers if large salvos were launched. The unveiling also serves a symbolic role. By showcasing the YJ-20 now, Beijing demonstrates not only that these systems exist, but also that it wants the world to take notice. It is a form of strategic messaging, a statement that China is advancing in areas once considered exclusive domains of a few powers. Taken together, the YJ-20 adds a new dimension to the evolving balance of power in the Pacific. It doesn't just represent a new missile. It represents a shift in how nations must think about operating in contested spaces. The YJ-20 isn't just another entry in a lineup of missiles. It's a sign of how fast technology is moving and how quickly the rules of strategy can change. We've seen how a hybrid design could reshape the balance of presence at sea and challenge assumptions about defense. But the real question is, how many more systems like this are already in development, waiting to be revealed? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.